we have two of our fabulous painter masters who are presenting live for you here today. And the first painter master is Cher Pendardis, and she's an award-winning artist and author of the famed Painter Wow books. And she's going to show off the real watercolor and real wet oil for you today. And then next, we've got Android Jones, and he also is a painter master, which I'm sure you're well aware, entertainment artist and an educator, and he travels the world sharing his incredible talents. And as a matter of fact, he happens to be almost in transit right now. So we've got Android in the airport. He's live on the line here. So as far as what's new in Painter 12 at a very high level, we've got some fabulous new um, real watercolors and real wet oils. And these really are taking lifelike emulation of traditional media to a new level. You're going to see when Cher is showing this to you, there's a full control panel where you can adjust to the minute detail everything about these beautiful new brush categories. Our progressive new tools, and one that is unique to Painter on the market, that is the kaleidoscope painting. And Android's going to show that off for you. And he does the best job of anyone I've ever seen with this kaleidoscope tool. And I'm not going to say anything more, because his demo will absolutely blow you away. Then we've also got the time-saving mirror tool. So you paint on one side of the canvas and mirrors on the other, saving you half the time. For any of our photographers or image editors out there, we have a new clone source palette, where previously in Painter 11, you could only have one clone source, or you'd have to do a workaround where you copied and pasted into layers. You can now open up multiple clone sources via this clone source palette. There's all kinds of new dynamic settings for your brushes, for the merge modes, for the way they interact with the canvas. And the interface is completely revamped. So we've done a lot of work to modernize this user interface and give you the best experience possible. And this includes seven new workspaces from our Painter Masters. And of course, Cher has contributed a watercolor workspace, and Android a creativity workspace, and they'll introduce those to you in their demo. And then finally, there's many performance and display improvements for you. And you can go to our Painter Demo Gallery and see videos on each one of these topics. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pass control over to so Cher here. So happy to be here helping out with the launch of the beautiful new Painter 12. Uh, as you look at the workspace here, uh, I have a combination of the default workspace and my watercolor workspace because I wanted to show you more of the capabilities of Painter 12. Uh, my watercolor workspace is a little bit more simple. It includes fewer brush categories than are in the default workspace. Now, let's look up at the very top. You'll see that the brush selector has moved from the right side to the left here in Painter 12. And you'll, you'll also see the properties bar across the top. And if you look over on the far right, you will see a recent brushes bar that allows you to, to click between the recent brushes that you've painted with. Um, you'll also see the navigator here that's been redesigned, and I'm going to go over that a little bit more later. Uh, and you'll see the color panel with the mixer and the color set, uh, color set libraries here, and the layers palette and the channels palette. Down at the bottom of my screen, I have a couple of the custom palettes that I designed for my watercolor workspace. And they uh, allow you to choose the color, excuse me, choose the paper textures much more easy, easily. Uh, and these are some of my favorites for painting with watercolor. There's also a watercolor commands palette. Lift canvas to watercolor layer, wet entire watercolor layer for use with the watercolor category, uh, dry watercolor layer. And then for use with digital watercolor, we have diffuse digital watercolor and dry digital watercolor. OK, uh, let's go up to the top of our screen and open the brush selector. You'll see that it's been redesigned. And with Painter 12, uh, 
the, the folks at Corel have combined some of the brush categories to make it easier for you to choose. Uh, if you want to switch to the if you want to switch to, say for instance, another brush library, you can do it right here. There's the Painter 11 brushes and you see the Painter 12 brushes right here. Now, uh, as you install Painter, you will see the, the brush uh, categories are going to be shown as icons here, but you know, in my workspace, I like to show them as a list. So we'll do like this. Uh, now, this is a watercolor. Okay, just a second here. There we go. This is a watercolor that I created in Painter 12, and it's just about finished. I'm going to do to demonstrate some brush strokes, and then I'm also going to show you um, through a little bit of the process of this painting. I'm going to open a new document first and just demonstrate some of the new watercolor brushes. I have my screen resolution set up a little bit uh, uh, broader so that you can see the marks of the brushes and also read the information in the palettes a lot more easily. So I'm viewing this at uh, uh, 1280 by 800, I believe. First of all, I have the real oval wash. And then I'm going to add a little bit more color to this and overlap the color. You see how the colors mix right here? And then they'll, they'll dry back on your canvas. The oval wash is a brush that I designed so that you can actually make smooth washes. And you'll notice as it diffuses, you don't see the little the little black grainy nature that you saw with some of the watercolor brushes in the earlier version of Painter 12. The real grainy wash, I'm going to choose a little bit darker color here, will allow you to bring up a lot of the paper grain, you know, as you're painting here. Go down to the real pointed bristle, which is allows you to do a flourish type of stroke. Real wet bristle, this is something that has a lot of wetness applied to it. The real wet detail is one you know, that I used for the detail in my watercolor painting and the inside of the flower. The Real Wet Filbert is another one that's a favorite. And then another one of my favorites is the Real Wet Flat Fringe. With this one, you'll see that the, the color pools on the edges of the brush stroke. And there are some brushes that are really wonderful for texture, like the Fractal Wash Fringe. This is one that I used in my watercolor painting to add a mottled light to the lily pads. And then let's mix some other color into this as well. And you'll see how it's pooling along the edge here as well. Very lovely pooling along the edge as it dries back. Okay, I'm going to close this right now. Oh. Wait, <laughs> there's a couple more that I wanted to show because I hadn't got to that point in my painting yet. There's a scratch that allows you to scratch just as we would, you know, with a sharp implement into, my, into our traditional watercolor. Also, a wet splatter.
and a dry splatter. And one of my favorites is the real wet sponge. So, you know, within the, within the watercolor category, the real wet watercolor category here, we have texture, we have cal calligraphic capability, we have the ability to paint really flat washes, and the ability to scratch back uh, textured washes, and detail type brushes as well. Okay, I'm going to close this document. Okay, uh, I began this watercolor painting with a sketch with a 2B pencil. I went down to the park in San Diego, Balboa Park, and shot some photographs of the lily pads on the reflecting pool. And I set one of the photographs up next to my computer, and I sketched this looking at the photograph. My next stage was painting on the canvas with the digital watercolor. At this point, after laying in the washes with the digital watercolor, and I'll just lay in a few brush strokes right here, I use the coarse mop brush, which is up near the top right here. I'm going to hold down the Option key and just sample color from the image. Switch from the brush to the dropper by holding down the Option key. And just lay in just a little bit of color like right here. Then at this point, you can choose Lift Canvas to Watercolor Layer from your menu here on the Layers palette or you can do it using the custom palette that I built for you right here. And you'll see a watercolor layer appear in the layers panel right here. Now at this point, you know, I wanted to add texture. So I chose the watercolor category down here and the grainy wash camel. And then I chose, in the custom palette with the watercolor papers, I chose the French watercolor paper. And then right here, wet entire watercolor layer. So you'll see the texture appear. And you can do this multiple times if you want to add more texture. I'm going to zoom in. Whoops. Oh, what happened? Sorry about that. Let's see. There we go. Now you see the texture that's been added. Now that's really, um, that's enlarged a lot. Okay, I'm going to close this one. Let's see. Now the next stage. You'll see I've continued. Now this is flattened, you know, for purpose of the demonstration. Uh, you'll see I've added more color. Uh, because it's reduced to 50%, you don't really see the texture as you did, you know, when I zoomed in. But I gradually built up the washes. Now here we see I've built it up to the point where we're looking a little bit more like the final. I'm going to go back to the real watercolor again. Now with this stage right here, I used one of our favorite brushes, the Fractal Wash Wet variant of real watercolor. And I'm just going to sample color from here. And you'll see as I lay, I'm just going to lay this over the lily pad right here. And this is a bigger file, so the brush appears smaller. 
and you'll see how that dries back. And it gives kind of a mottled light. Uh, it's one of my favorite brushes for kind of an impressionistic look. At this stage, too, I began to add detail. So I'm going to go down here and choose the real wet detail. Sample color from the image. Brighten it up a little bit. And we'll zoom in. And you'll see it dry back. And then by building the uh, the washes along the edge. You know, I did that with a, a small oval wash, also the filbert. Sampling colors and then just darkening them a little bit. You can go back over to the navigator here to go back to 100%. Uh, I want to take a minute to talk a little bit about the navigator. You see, I can move around my image like so. You know, if, if we want to zoom in further, we can go right back, click right here, and go right back to 100%. Um, there are other, we can, we can rotate the image right here. Other commands here for color management, tracing paper opacity to show the grid, showing pasta in the drawing modes, draw anywhere, draw outside, and draw inside. Okay, we'll go on to the next stage. And then we have the final here. You know, actually there's a little bit more work to do with it. Um, let's see, just going to go ahead and close these right now and we'll move on to the real wet oils. Now, one of my favorite uh, brushes in the Real Wet Oils is the Wet Oil. So I'm just going to paint some broad strokes over the sky right here. We'll do a little abstract landscape. Now the real wet oil allows you to mix. Now if you see if I paint with a very light pressure on the stylus, you'll see that the color blends. And with the turpentine, you can actually pull one color through the other. Now, with the bandwidth, you know, actually broadcasting as well as painting, you know, because these are high-powered painting tools, you see it takes a little while for the effect to happen. But it's as if the turpentine is actually flowing into the oil. So it's still working, still working. The Wet Blender is a brush that allows you to paint thick and thin, has a little edge on it. The, the controls with the Real Wet Oils are similar to the controls with the Real Wet Watercolor. <clears throat> The liquid oil is another favorite. It's 
It's a softer edged brush. And the erosion is another one that allows us to move. And it takes a little while for this effect to show. But you see the really beautiful effect up in this area of the canvas. <clears throat> I'd like to show a little bit about the brush dynamics. So I'm going to close this document and open a new document. Switch back to the watercolor brushes. Okay. <clears throat> With the brush dynamics, we can change color on the fly. I'm, I'm sorry, we can change the size of the brush on the fly and much more. So I'm pressing the command and the option key. You see the brush ghost of my brush right here? When I press command and option, you'll see the radius of this brush is 12. And I can increase it or decrease it like so. Say now I want a, a 31 pixel brush. So it allows us to do this on the fly. Also, we can change the opacity of the brush. So if we do this again, bring it up to here. And then if I tap the command key two times, you'll see it goes to opacity. If I pull over to the right, I can increase my opacity. Pull to the left, decrease my opacity. So it's really nice to be able to adjust these on the fly. So I hope you enjoyed this demo focusing mostly on the real wet watercolor brushes and exciting Painter 12. And happy painting! Thank you so much, Cher, for that detailed dive into our new real tools. And you also touched on many of the new palettes and controls. And just to remind everyone, we'll have videos available on each one of these topics for you. So we'll go ahead and switch over to Andrew Jones. I'm Android, and then I'm going to walk you through some of my favorite features in the new Painter 12. Now, one of my new favorite features is the mirror painting tool. You can find it right over here. I'm going to click this with your painting and it's going to create a little green line to see the center green you can position that anywhere on your canvas and I'm going to select my uh, fractal sketch one of the tools in my painter workspace and I'm just going to start making a little sketch for you guys here one of the elements that I enjoy the most about the uh, mirrored painting feature is that it's not creating, if you were to create an image and say flip it horizontally and get an exact mirror, that's not what this is really doing. It's actually dynamically making two strokes uh, simultaneously, but it's also taking into account you know, the pressure sensitivity and the angle and the rotation. So if you really notice here, you'll see that the strokes that I'm getting, um, there is, uh, they're, they're actually different. Um, there, you're still getting that, that feeling of symmetry, but there's a subtle variation in the strokes that you achieve through this tool. And uh, what's what's great about that is that it really helps you kind of break out of that that sort of that sterile computer-generated mirroring that you would have gotten if you were to just flip this and transform it. And I find that there's something about your brain and your subconscious that actually can recognize that. That's what we find symmetry beautiful, but even in very symmetrical things, there's always a small amount of uh, organic differences there. And I find that the way that Painter has engineered their mirrored function, that it takes that into account. And it's really great. And this brush that I'm using, it's, uh, it's, I designed it just for sketching, for getting, kind of getting loose ideas out there. The uh, opacity and the brush size are both uh, they're both variable based off the pressure sensitivity uh, that you put down in the pen. So it helps you create a very, very loose 
gestural uh, organic strokes. And um, I've adjusted the spacing on this brush to mimic um, a natural paper. And so next here is the, uh, you'll see I'm engaging the temporal color palette. This is another one of my favorite new features that allows you to adjust your colors on the fly uh, while still keeping you very engaged and uh, you know, in the game, so to speak, in this painting. Uh, what's also nice about it is you see there's a really there's a, a nice big preview uh, area where you're able to see the color you're selecting. And what's great about it being able to be conjured up on the fly is that it gives you a really great opportunity to compare the new color you're selecting based off any other color you have in your palette. And uh, it's very powerful, especially when you're trying to create any subtle color differences, um, temperature and or value. So this is a really, really powerful tool. I find that it, um, it also enables me to get a lot more variation in my colors and encourages a lot more variation because it's so easily uh, accessible to you now. And so it's a really great, really powerful new feature that I think everyone that's interested in color will get a lot of use out of. So these eyes, I'm just about finished with them. I'm going to throw a little highlight. It's about calm done. And I think we are about just about finished with the eyes. So that is the mirrored painting mode. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to select my gradient. I'm going to turn off mirroring and uh, go to my paint bucket, uh, select gradient as uh, my option here. And uh, I'm going to lay down this gradient just so I have a little bit of a background to work on just to kind of get, get out of that. Just blank white screen. I'm going to adjust the angle on this. So now I just got something that feels like I have a little space there. I'm going to take my fader and just soften a couple of the edges to create an illusion of a little bit more depth. I'm going to create a new layer. And what I want to show you now is uh, one of the brushes I've designed called the Fractal Forge. Fractal Forge is basically an a, a alteration of the pattern chalk tool. Create another layer and select one of the patterns that comes right in the box with the Android Creativity Workspace. And just kind of give you a little taste of how this brush works and or how I use this brush. Right, what you're seeing here is I'm tilting the pen and moving quickly back and forth to create these very uh, interesting and organic abstract shapes. Uh, what this brush really enables you to do is you know, it gives you pretty much a, a limitless variety of abstract designs. and based off the parameters of the pattern that you've selected. Um, there's just limitless variations of colors and shapes and forms this brush allows you to create. And so I'm working with my, my pattern library. Um, I have, these are all custom patterns that I've saved, just grabbed photos, made different designs, and I've also cut all these out on separate layers with no background and saved them as a PNG and that's how I capture them. And what's nice about that is that it preserves the shape, and so you're actually painting with a fully rendered, colored shape, uh, which is really interesting. And so I'm just going to just throw down these different designs here, just to give you an idea of how how quickly you can generate uh, really interesting and dynamic abstract shapes. And now I'm going to engage the kaleidoscope tool which is uh, definitely one of the most interesting new features that Painter 12 has to offer. Here, I'm turning the kaleidoscope on and create a new layer, and I've selected nine segments for this particular kaleidoscope. I'm going to go back and select the pattern and go select my Fractal Forge brush again and show you what happens when you combine these two elements together. 
I think you get some really, really dynamic and really powerful results out of it. They're really exciting. And uh, not only is it creating a lot of interesting shapes, but you know, I think it, it creates an experience. And this experience is one that's it's very dynamic and uh, it's very engaging and uh, it's, it's really interesting. And, uh, it's pretty much the ultimate mandala maker that I've ever seen. And, you know, it's so exciting that it's generating all these high res in, in real time, which is something I've never seen another program uh, quite achieve. And so, I'm just going to go through a series of different patterns I have, and just to show you the range and the variety of shapes and colors and patterns that uh, you can achieve with this new function. Here, this brush I'm selecting right now, this is actually a, uh, a snowflake image. This one creates a lot of really, really beautiful, soft, organic, and geometric shapes together. Really exciting. And you can see, too, the way this is generating. It's not generating them all simultaneously. There's a, a bit of variation, and so sometimes, depending on the shape of the pattern, I found that a lot of times it's almost, these images feel like they're almost being woven together through the technology, which I think is really cool. Uh, this pattern right here, it's a, uh, it's a stained glass window uh, pattern that I have selected. So yeah, I think needless to say, you can see how this tool pretty much offers you hours of, of interesting fun and experimentation that you can have. I'm always really, whenever I create a new pattern, I'm always really excited uh, to bring it in to the Kaleidoscope feature and see what kind of results come out of it. Uh, for example, this one, this is, a, uh, this is a rose pattern that I've captured here. And uh, something interesting about this tool, one of the things I found, it's almost, it's almost kind of like an engine, the way that it, it multiplies your efforts. Um, you know, the idea of trying to do this without this sort of a tool would be uh, painstakingly complicated and difficult. But uh, with the advent of this kaleidoscope, I think it really opens up a lot of new doors for people that really want to just play with the element of design and what they can create. And uh, this, you know, this really puts the fun back into the process of, of painting. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting and it's dynamic and I'm going to create one more big one. So I've created one big brush stroke and I've just made one s slow stroke out to the left uh, to take us out of here. And uh, so I just made this one stroke, and it's almost like after one stroke, I can just sit back and uh, watch the, the generating ripple of my creation. So hope you guys have enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, keep painting, and, uh, and have a great day. And thanks again to our presenters. Uh, a lot of really great questions have come in. We've done our best to, to keep up with them. One question that came up that I thought was interesting, both for for, for Cher and for Andrew, was to try to summarize, if you could, out of Painter 12, what's your most favorite dimension of Painter 12 that you would uh, you would select? What's your favorite part? So why don't we start with uh, Andrew first? Good. Well, you know, that's definitely a hard question because there's so many different features that I find uh, valuable. But you know, I think with, with this new build. And I'm really, like, the, like I showed in the demo, I'm really attracted to this kaleidoscope tool. And uh, not just for how I can implement it into my own workflow, but what I enjoy the most out of it is how accessible it makes 
the creative experience for um, for for artists and non-artists alike. You know, I've shown this to a lot of friends that don't have much of an art background, and as soon as they open this up and start playing around, they instantly feel like they're connected. You know, you don't need a uh, years of academic training to enjoy this brush and I just think when people can engage that 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 feeling of being creative and feeling an artist it's a really it's a really powerful experience for a painting program to offer so I think that's going to be my favorite one thanks Andrew how about uh, how about you share hi there uh, thank you very much um, well I'd have to say I I'm head over heels in love with the new real wet watercolor medium <laughs> what we can do with the transparent washes uh, overlaying on the different surfaces and things like that. And then I'm also fascinated with the symmetry, you know, because I also like to paint elements in nature and I'm, I'm really excited to dig more into that and create some artwork with that using that feature as well. And I, I really appreciated uh, Andrew's demo of the kaleidoscope too. That was totally amazing. Thanks very much. Wonderful. Android, if there's anything that you'd like to open up and talk to the audience about right now, we're going to stop with the Q&A, but if you'd like to say goodbye to everyone. I just want to thank everyone for showing up today and uh, giving us your attention. Um, I really hope you guys can download the, the trial and, and uh, spread the joy that is Painter 12. So thanks a lot, guys. Great. Thank you so much, Android. And we'll open up the line for share. But, you know, I hope that everyone enjoyed the demo, and thank you very much again for being here with all of us. Thank you, Cher. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tanya. And I echo Andrew in uh, wanting to thank everyone for coming to view this demo of the new Painter 12. We are just so happy about the new version of the program and all the limitless possibilities. Um, I'm very honored to be here with everyone. Uh, I, as I told uh, Andy and Tanya and Andrew earlier, this is a little bit uh, uh, emotional for me since I've used Painter since a beta of version one. Uh, the Painter Wow book that I'm working on right now uh, happens to be its 10th edition. It's been a labor of love all these years. I've met some amazing artist friends uh, and other colleagues through the course of, you know, working on the book for a long, long time. And I, I just want to wish Painter a very heartfelt, happy 20th birthday coming up. So uh, Painter has brought us all a lot of joy over the years, and I just want to give, give Painter a huge thank you.